Yoruba film lovers, I watched the film Oro, and these are my thoughts. Continue watching. Bye bye, just a look alike to know what I think. Also, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. So, the film Oro started with two perfect couples doing their thing. Of course, they were happy couples. Quality we for <laughs> play. The ladies and artist. Did you make this? Of course I did. It's my talent. And also a photographer. Her husband received a phone call from his mom asking him to come for a festival. Shortly, also a friend called them, that is the couple, inviting them for his anniversary dinner. The couples were stuck in traffic. Your country for you. I thought they were going for their friend's anniversary dinner. But I was surprised to discover that they were actually on their way to the village. The clip showed the husband driving while the wife was asleep and they were in a village at night. The man stopped where fire was burning and had a conversation with one of the village vigilantes who also warned the man that up he knows women are not allowed to see the oro. Then they showed the couples as they arrived at the man's parents' house, the wife was lying down and at midnight, the Oro people were passing by, chanting, and she took her camera and snapped them. Immediately, someone dressed in leaf appeared to the lady and she got scared and screamed. And also, immediately she snapped them, the Oro people outside knew that somebody had seen them. This is the beginning of trouble for this couple and the parents of the man because the Oro people said she must be sacrificed for seeing the Oro. There was a lot of argument and quarreling. She has seen the Oro. She has defied their has tradition. Defied. They faced so many things. They tried to escape, to but some mysterious things were happening to them. They ended up escaping, oh, but the Oro people outsmart them by picking the full step of the wife and they took it to their shrine and pour it down there, invoking her spirit and she appeared. The spirit of the lady appeared and then they made some chants. That was the beginning of another terrible trouble and battle for the couples. As the wife started seeing things and masquerade in her dreams, the lady started seeing things, she started having nightmares. <laughs> Having a lot of mental breakdown. Breathing demon. <laughs> the husband invited a pastor to pray for her, but it was all to no avail. Her problem did not get solved. To cut a long story short, she ended up in the village where they tie her in red clothes. While her husband and his parents watch helplessly as the Oro people invoke the Olu Oro to come and sacrifice her. But there was a flashback to all the events that, that has happened. They repeated the place where the husband was discussing with the vigilante, where the vigilante was telling her, telling the husband that, hope you know, women are not allowed to see the Oro. Then they showed the lady waking up and then she lie down back while the, the husband was driving. Then the husband drove off. Then they repeated another clip where she was lying down. That is, before she took the picture of the Oro. She picked up the camera. She wanted to snap, snap them. But she went back and put the camera back to its position and slept off. That is to say, the possibility is that she didn't take the picture. So all that we have been watching, all the troubles that, all the troubles she had been passing through that we have been watching was probably she was recalling her dream or her imagination. So she put the camera back and slept, slept and that was the end of the film. That is to say, she didn't take the picture. It was just an assumption or maybe a dream. If she had taken the picture, what would have happened to her? Lessons to be learned in this film and my opinion are there is need for us to know not just our own tradition, not only that, we also need to know the traditional way of life, culture of our spouse or whoever we want to marry, even if crap. we do not believe in those traditions. Some certain traditional practices are not realistic and should either be readjusted, reversed or completely erased. Our traditions need to be modernized, just like other religions. Christianity, for example, evolved from Judaism. Imagine if Christians were to be living according to the traditions of the Old Testament back to back, life would be different. Matthew 5 17 Jesus Christ said take note that I have come to destroy the law or the prophet I have not come to destroy 
but to fulfill. You can see that Jesus Christ broke a lot of rules in the Bible. He healed somebody on the Sabbath day and he gave reasons why he healed the sick person on the Sabbath day and so many other things that he did. I mean, Jesus Christ broke the rules. He corrected a lot of things. He made serving God more easier comparing to the Old Testament. There are lessons to be learned in this film. This film is very interesting and it ended very well. Thank you.